So project three quarter ton to half ton short box is one day away from a big C10 show that we've been wanting to go to two months ago. We started on this. It's down to the wire. As you can see, it's half ton in the rear, three quarter ton in the front still. It's about a mile too high in the front. David's gonna take care of most of that today and I'll help him out. It's uh, spindles are getting changed, shocks are getting changed, springs, lower control arms, and if everything we've read online works, then the upper control arms stay. The calipers aren't even gonna get rebled, and he is gonna have a super cool truck at the end of the day. Watch this thing drive, it actually looks super, super fun. Get it on the way. Yes, you heard me right. We're actually going to put it on a hoist. I know that's chickening out after everything we've done, but we do only have a day left and we want it to be cool and we want to get done. So we're going to cheat just a little bit. Should be the same process as you guys will do at home. Okay. Put that thing in the air. Hopefully I can get a fucking window installed and then I can help you. Disassembly of three quarter ton. Maybe not. Yeah. You're gonna get it today? Not today. So, what you gotta do is actually pry the caliper part in there. No, this way. Oops. I need to kind of stir the part away. Just let it loosen up a bit and then it's. Loosens up the tension. Less hammering, a little more thinking. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. This assembly begins. Getting brake rotors off is fairly simple. You just put a flat screwdriver, small pry bar in that cap behind the cap. Pry it off. You'll see right behind that's the nut. With a cotter pin holding it in place. We're just gonna remove all that stuff. We're not saving any of this stuff, so we're not having to be too gentle, but still, if it can be used for somebody else, we'll try not to hurt it. Did you get that off already? <laughs> no, she is a fighter. Take one. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I left, the, left the tie rod end on till now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we can see what we're thing. doing. Come on, fucker. There we go. Nice. Okay, knock the nut off. Get the thing off. Let's get that thing out of our way. We're just trying to make the spindle a little lighter before we pull it all off. You can see we've removed tie rod end. We got it hung up out of the way. We're going to remove this end of the sway bar. I'm going to try to leave that end in because like we said we're in a giant hurry. There we go. We're having to dig through 50 years of crud to try and even find the nuts or the cotter, or the cotter pins. Anyways, grab a screwdriver, wire brush, whatever you like, get that crud out of the way. See if you can wire brush right there. Because you want to be able to see, see threads there so that you don't have a totally wrecked nut in case you need to reuse it or just a nut that gets stuck on there because it's gold. So I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning here. We managed to dig through the muck and we're just pulling out the cotter pins. There's one, another one up here. Perfect. Now what we're gonna do is just spray a little lube on these things. Where's the lube? Right here. Just to hopefully help it come off the threads decent. 
Away we go. Okay, now what we're going to do is just break these loose. There, oh, this is actually pretty easy. So we're going to run them out about a quarter of an inch. And we're going to use that big giant three quarter ton spring to actually bust the ball joints loose from the spindle. So, right there. Just, just get it up a quarter of an inch roughly, maybe a little more. Okay, perfect. We don't want it to bust apart in our faces. Nope. And now we'll do the top one. Jesus, look at that. Yeah, unbelievable. After 50 years. We're getting lucky, kids. Some of the stuff's coming apart pretty easy. I think it's all by hand. So now. Same thing with that one. We're just going to drop it down so we can visibly see just some wrench. sort of space, 3 16 whatever. Okay, so just so we're clear on this, we're going to use that giant spring to bust the ball joints loose. Because a lot of times people use a pickle fork under here, and that just makes a mess. So the logic is that this spring is trying to push down on this A-arm. We got them both loose. This one's hung up by the frame, so we're going to tap right there with the biggest hammer we got. Start swinging. Nice. There we go. That's it. Okay, look at that. Now the gaps between the ball joint and the spindle. Nuts loose again. We're going to do the same with the bottom. See if you can get a swing on that. Let's see if I can. There it is. That one's done too, right? Okay, now the problem is, is there's a lot of pressure on these bolts, so we're going to support the lower air arm. We're going to bring this down on the hoist, and we're going to support this with a jack. So if you're at home and you got the thing on jack stands, get a jack under here before you even play with this. There's a lot of pressure on that spring. Okay, stop there. You can see it doesn't have to be super complicated. We just got this as a safety. Now we're going to pull the spindle apart, the two nuts, and then we'll jack it back up and the spring should hopefully fall out as long as it's not 10 feet long regular one okay so now we're going to go jack it back up go ahead i'm going to stand back a little bit that's spring kind of vicious no no it's not going to fall out that far yep go up and this is how it's going to work yeah i'm actually standing back here yeah, keep going. yep keep going Oh, it just fell apart. Beauty! Look at that! <laughs> All right, that was easy. Now, yeah, three quarter ton parts. With three quarter ton. So, here's what I wanted to show you guys. Here's the spindles, both sitting in the same space. Do you see how this is the center part of the wheel? And now on the lowered spindle, it's way higher. It's the two inch. So, when you buy a two inch drop, that's what they mean. What's beautiful about this and why you want to use these when you're lowering your car is that this simply changes the height of the wheel without modifying the springs, without changing the geometry of your A-arms. It doesn't change the geometry of your sway bar. It's a beautiful way to lower a truck. We're going to do this for our first two inches and then we've got lowered springs for the next two inches. Should drop the truck anywhere from four to five inches. But that's your comparison. Pretty cool, hey? So if you look here, this is a giant hole on the three-quarter ton spindle, much smaller on the half ton, and that's why we'll have to change the lower control arm. We're hoping the two tops are the same. That's what our research tells us. And they look very similar. So here we found rivets. They've never been replaced, so away we go. We're going to pound them out. But it gets the job done. Yeah, you can kind of see the centers of the rivets now. The heads are gone. We've ground them. We've tried to tap them down a little bit. We think we're going to be able to wedge this apart with the air hammer again. Takes care of the ball joint coming out. We still got some work to do though. 
You can see those. We're probably going to clean them off with the air hammer because it's already hooked up. But realistically, you could just grind them flush and then tap them out the bottom. Again, ultra aggressive. Here we go with the grinder. We're just going to clean the tops off. Pop out the bottom. We'll clean up the surface. Put a fresh ball joint on that space. Put ball joints on there and get this thing put together. We'll get that tightened up. We're actually going to install the spindle into place for a split second. We want to make sure that we can reuse the caliper. If we can't, we're in a small town, so we're going to have to reorder one and it might take a day or two, so we're not. Hopeful on that. What I want to do is see if the holes line up and if we can get the pins into place. Sure looks like it, doesn't yeah, it? I can see right through it there. Okay, see the actual it. sizing's good. Okay, we think we got a win on that one. So we're not even going to have to bleed the brakes, <laughs> hopefully. Here we go. Oh man. Okay, so a new ball joint going into place. We are fortunate here at the shop. We got this big fancy tool to do it. Uh, if you don't have that, a press would work well. I don't recommend hammering them in. I've heard it done that way quite a few times. It just can't. It's hard on stuff, and you don't want to be beating on ball joints unless you have to. So we're just going to set this up. Uh, no. Nope. nope. I don't know. Okay. Let's okay. see if we can draw that one. Oh. Yep, it's flush everywhere. There we go. Everything's flush. Ball joints installed, and now we're going to replace the body arm where this one is. That's our next step. We're going to get those bolts up there, get all the dirt and grease off of them, and get it switched around. So we're certain that they probably did these bolts when the motor was out at the factory. These have been on there that 50 some odd years. We had a little assortment of short extensions and a wobbly ratchet. And we seem to be making headway. We thought we might have to cut these, but we're winning. This is a boring video. The guy <laughs> using a ratchet. <laughs> Clickety click, click. Burm. That's it. Subframe with no control arm. Not bad. Everything's going pretty good so far. Okay, so before we get this going, I gotta point out something. There is a pin right here, and it's an alignment pin so that this bar doesn't spin. So there's the hole, there's the pin. So you're gonna just put it in place and wind up the pin it kind of locks itself in there. So that just yeah, maybe put a nut on it. Sorry guys, we're short of TV crew or camera crew. Okay, we'll get the get the one on the back. 
you can see right here that our pin is clearly not in the right spot or our hole is not lined up with the pin. We'll get that after we just get it loosely hanging here. a little hammering. Yeah. Oh. Okay. We're falling apart here. We gotta take a break. Just like that, we're showing you we're not scared of making mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Our next step is to actually fit that right in. You'll see there's a little low spot in the A-arm where the spring's gonna sit. That's why we chose to get one full Turn out of it. Here we go. We're gonna put this back together. All right. Now for the money shot. Trying to get that in there. I'll try to hold the little bit here. Are we in already? Yeah, we're in. Holy! Look at that. We're in. I'm gonna put a nut on that. Clumsy gloves. And then you can tell that we're low because the spring already isn't under tension. Oh. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> oh yeah. We will be we'll sitting down. How does Yoda say it? My Jedi son. Or my Jedi knight. Oh, we're gonna sit so fucking low. It's gonna be awesome. Okay, those uh, springs are gonna need some alignment. Later, we'll get the rotor, caliper, and all the steering stuff back together and see where we're at. So at this point we're just tightening ball joints. You can see we got new ball joints, new spindle. Don't hate us on this used shock. We just wanted to get the truck put together and remeasure. And again, because we live in a small town, it'll take a few days to get the right shocks in. So we thought we'd at least reinstall it just for the test drive. All right, on with the half ton rotor. You'll notice it's not brand new. It's light new because we got it at a swap meet from the guy who upgraded his brakes. And we think that's just fine. Picture this more like a high school project than some sort of award-winning show car. And then you'll get the idea of what we're doing. But here, we're super thankful for GMC. God bless them. Look at that. We managed to use a used A-arm in the space where a three-quarter ton was. We managed to reuse a three-quarter ton upper A-arm. The steering fits, the caliper's going to work, and uh, we will be upgrading the calipers. Or even just putting new ones on with new flex lines, but we just wanted to prove the point that this is all going to work first. Get it going down the road, and then keep playing with it. It's sure looking good. You can tell that tire is going to be tucked up real nice. So you're thinking to just take that off? And take that one off. We don't have to knead these bearings full of grease because clearly they were on the truck and they're fine. But we are gonna put some fresh stuff in there to feel better about the whole thing. Just a big blob of it in there will be fine. Yeah, I'm just get it in all the way around. There you go. Now, if you're ever wondering how to set these up, just get that good and snug in there. And you just keep spinning this, keep tightening that. And what you want to do is just keep spinning that. When you get it too tight, it'll actually slow the bearings down. We're not there yet. Let's get a big tool on there. No, 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 we're doing this by hand. Just in case we were wondering if David had ever done this before, the answer is no. <laughs> We're just going to snug that up. Keep snugging. Keep going. Yeah, it's still going good. Nope, see how it kind of slowed everything down there? Now back it off. There we go. We're in good shape there. All right, now we're going to try to find a hole close for the cotter pin. Put it all back together. Okay, 
just tooting around in the place. Okay. Thank you, General Motors. I love the simplicity of the sounds. So, no steering. we're learning stuff for you. Tie rod end will not work, we don't think. Okay. Grab the hammer Might just to see. Just to see if the taper is actually in the pulp. But I don't think it doesn't look like oh. it, does it? Just just the threads will fit. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, we got a new problem. Half ton to three quarter ton. We're hoping it's going to get done in that joint right there. We're not going to let that slow us down. There's a lot of progress we can make without that. But now we're hunting for some parts. It's hot as balls. <laughs> Feeling uncomfortable. I'm glad we're done. <laughs> we thought it was going to be six hours to do the front end. We're not quite done, so it may not, but we're four and a half hours in, proud of ourselves. We thought we'd take a little and see how good it looks on the ground, because it's right here on the hoist. If we have to trim the springs a little bit, you know the drill. In the spirit of this project, we went out back in the shop and found some old 1990s wheels that came off something else. And uh, for a project, let's spend as little money as possible to build a sort box. I think we're going to do the trick. Oh. Are we stuck on the hoist? I think so. On the front. <laughs> <laughs> Good news. It's kind of good news. <laughs> good yeah. Jack. There was just a small chance we might have wrecked David's truck. <laughs> that thing where we were cutting one coil off to make it super low? Yeah. <laughs> Let's get some more blocks of wood. Yeah. Just like that, we're showing you we're not scared of making mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. in history, I think we're going to have to raise a car after lowering it. Looks wicked though. Man, good looking at it. So right now you're holding this high off the ground. Party. The big C10 party we've been working on this truck for two and a half months for. And as you can see, it's all taken apart. I don't know if you remember yesterday when we were cutting springs that we got at a swap meet and we were both being funny. It turns out I put the cross member right on the ground. So we kind of destroyed those springs. They're not going to work to this application. We got the springs out right now. We'll show you what we did to make it steer. And even though they look old and gross, all of these tie rod ends were actually tight. So we changed everything right across from this mount on the idler arm and just changed the pitman over, put it right onto the pitman of the original steering box. So this is half ton stuff with the three quarter ton steering box, three quarter ton pitman arm. We are going to, in a bit of a mad hurry, we're gonna take these three quarter ton springs, chop them down by one coil, 
and hope that we've got something that looks to be a good ride height. So these aftermarket ones we've ruined. We're going to chop the stock ones down to get the ride height right and then probably readjust with some better springs. But for today, we need to get to a car show. Here's where we're at. Clear. I think that's perfect. I think that's good. And then we're still gonna do the rear, eh? I think it'll need it. Yeah. Well, we're finally happy with the ride height. Looks like we're gonna make it on the same day that the party's happening, which is really good. We just got some shocks, sway bar, clean this truck up so it looks good. We might try to lower the rear. your introduction so that you know we're real car guys the truck is done we're already having fun with it but what we're really known for is killer customs like this so if you want to see more of that some DIY stuff as far as paint correction we'll show you how to do body work we'll teach you a little bit about painting cars sanding cars just hit the subscribe button share it with your friends and you know what to do like it or comment tell us what you think we'll try to provide content that you're interested in